and welcome to another video from uh, Mulder Stud. Uh, today's topic is antique uh, wool clothing. I'm going to mention a bit about the pitfalls and also what we can do about it. Um, take a great coat like this, for example, three or four kilos of uh, pretty sturdy wool. If you find something like this, there's going to be a bit of a vintage smell to it. Um, I'm saying vintage smell, but we know it's an unpleasant smell, like it's been in the basement for 50 years or so. It might also be a bit dirty and you might also have moth holes in it. And something like this would keep generations of moths happy as anything. But what can we do about it? Uh, if you Google how to remove the smell from clothes, you'll find uh, any number of um, recommendations from uh, putting them in the freezer doesn't really work. Uh, hanging them outside in the wind and sun. I've had stuff hanging outside for two or three months in very strong wind and blazing sun. Doesn't really work. At least not if there's more than just a little bit of smell. Uh, what I find works, something like this, and I've already put it through it, is water and detergent. Two ways you can do that. Bung it in the washing machine on the wool cycle with some wool detergent. Uh, army stuff like this tends to work fine with that. It's uh, strong. Uh, just keep the temperature a bit low and you won't shrink it. But uh, the detergent and water really gets both the smell and the dirt out. If you want a bit more control over the process, use a bucket. I've washed tweed jackets in a bucket of woolen detergent and been utterly disgusted at how insanely filthy they were. But at least with the bucket you can control how many times you rinse it out and make sure you get all the dirt out which makes it nice um, it's something like this takes days to dry after it's been washed as well but at least when it has been washed it's clean and also all the moths are gone so you can get on to stage two of the process um, fixing where the moths have been feasting now let's see, oh, here we go, a nice hole. It would be a crying shame if a great jacket like this, a great coat actually, uh, would be ruined because of a few holes. And many people would just pass it by and think, ah, that's all broken and busted. But I'm going to show you how we can actually fix these holes using a bit of craft, uh, something called felting which I'm quite new to, I admit, but I found out that it was actually surprisingly easy to do. Um, so we're going to look at what you need to do this. I'm going to show you a bit of my amateur level technique and we're going to have a look at the result. So stay with me because it doesn't cost much, but easy to do and the results are worth the effort. So let's go close up. I've um, selected a place that needs uh, fibres replacing that isn't as visible as uh, a hole in the middle of the chest. Might be clever just to uh, to prove that the colour mix and process is going to work okay um, in case it doesn't work that well. Now I notice on this coat that uh, the bottom hem here is pretty frazzled all the way so I might actually just uh, take an inch off the bottom there which should be easy enough. But I have this patch here where I need a bit of material filling in. So, let's put the styrofoam behind there, protect the table, protect everything. Now I've got some grey and some blue wool. Take a bit of the grey and a bit of the blue. Um, this blue isn't a terrific match for the coat fabric. So as I showed earlier, I do also have some, uh, some knitting yarn. More. Now I had to take that apart a bit, it's a bit of a fiddly job, uh, de-yarning it so to speak, so that I can mix the fibres in with the other. So that's a slightly darker blue. So I've got two shades of blue and a grey and then I mix them together to make a more uniform colour out of these fibres. Uh, the more I mix here the more it will be just a single colour. If 
you ever looked at uh, Tweed, like Harris Tweed, you'll notice that um, it's all made up of primary colours. The closer you get, the more primary colours you see. And it's basically the same principle here, where you mix in the fibres and you end up with something that, at least until you're going close, looks like just one colour. So, what I have to do now is make these fibres attach to the coat. And the way I do that is lay fibres carefully over the hole and use the felting needle like this to sort of stab them in place. Now you have to be a bit careful, keep an eye on that you're sort of filling the hole. Now there's not a hole all the way through here, so I don't have to uh, make sure that I attach it to the edges perfectly. But I'm basically moving the fibres around and what this does with the barbed needle is that it first pushes them down, drags them up a bit, pushes them down, drags them up a bit. So in effect it's a sort of it's a sort of random odd way of weaving it in place. But we call it felting, so felting it is. And I can see now that already it's sort of filling in the missing fibres. Um, you want to, instead of going in with a big wad of um, fibres, you do want to uh, let it build up. That uh, both gives you control over the, how thick it will end up and also um, that you're filling it in nicely. If you put too much on it to start with, you'll just have a big lump of uh, felted wool, which probably won't look very good. And we can also see that it's not a perfect colour. I can see a bit, I might want to add a bit of uh, lighter grey into this as well. Um, this wool mix that the coat's made of obviously has more, more shades than I first noticed. But that's no problem, because I can just go back and uh, find some lighter grey wool as well and mix that in. But I have to say that so far, this is looking quite good. And uh, rather than uh, have you sit watching me for another 10 minutes stabbing away at this, I'll stop it here for a moment, go and get some uh, lighter grey wool and uh, pick up again when I'm a bit close to completion. So there we go. Now I added in some uh, lighter grey into my mix of uh, fibres and I uh, completed this little patch. Just going over it again and again. It's hard to know when to stop really, but uh, at some point you just have to say, yep, that's good enough. But that looks pretty good. And it also looks good on the back side. So, um, I don't know how many holes I've got left to do on this great coat, but it shows that the concept works. And really, for the cost of a few needles and some wool fibres, it would have been a shame to pass up on this coat. I'll take a photo of the whole coat afterwards and uh, let you see how it turns out. So, there we go. Um, one sort of smelly, possibly a bit dirty, certainly full of moth holes great coat is now on its way back to uh, its former glory. I could have passed straight on by, but I thought, no, this is too good to uh, not be fixed. So for the cost of uh, a few felting needles, a bit of wool and some of my time, it's back and can be used again. Now, of course, the more I look at it, the more moth holes I see. But now I know how to fix them. So do you. See you next time.